morning. Welcome to St. Timothy's Episcopal Church. Before we begin, a few announcements. Uh, in the rapidly changing landscape, the current decision from the bishop is local parishes can make decisions what is best for their own congregation regarding COVID protocols. So our vestry has decided that our 8 o'clock Sunday service and our midweek Wednesday service, people can take off masks once they are in the pews. 10 o'clock service on Sunday, we will remain masked because we have singing and we have children. So uh, that's the plan right now. Stay tuned because I'm sure it will change in five minutes. Uh, we do ask, uh, oh, and we, we hope to have coffee hour following both Sunday services outdoors in the parking lot, um, weather permitting. Throughout the summer, we'll continue to use plants to adorn the altar as we did last year, and then they are then planted around the grounds. We still have plenty of beds, so we can keep going with this plan. Uh, if you're interested in sponsoring or dedicating some plants on a particular Sunday, you can call the church office and we will get you set up with that. Today's plants are given to the glory of God in loving memory of their fathers by Thomas Craig and David their fathers, Thomas Craig and David Dickerhoof, by Mark and Candy Dickerhoof. Uh, as you can see, we have in fact taken out the carpet here in the sanctuary. Um, we'll see where it's going to go after this. We're not sure if it's going to be stained and refinished, or if we're going to put down some kind of wood or some other kind of carpet once again, but we're going to live with it like this for a while. The reason I bring that up, since it's obvious, um, is because when you get in and out of the pews, you'll see that there's a space, right? You're sit where you are sitting is a little higher than the floor around you, so please be careful getting in and out of the pews. Um, I put up some chairs and things to stop uh, people from tripping over the corners. Just watch your step, you're in a construction zone. That's the long short of it. A uh, special thank you to Henry Agater and Rita Haynes for all of their work the past month. Um, with weeding the, the brick pathway out there. Uh, Henry repainted the handrails by the two red doors. They did a lot of work over the past few days with carpet st strips and all of this. And Rita wiped down every surface in the entire building to get rid of the dust from the carpet. So if you see Rita or Henry, please thank them for all of their hard work. Our longtime sexton, Ron Johnson, has finally decided that he wants to retire for the fourth time. We have tried to talk him out of it, but it seems his mind is made up. So he will leave at the end of the month, and we will have a reception for Ron after the 10 o'clock service next week. So on the 27th, after the 10 o'clock service, we'll have a reception for him. Uh, if anyone would like to contribute to the going away gift for Ron, you can send it to the office or drop it off uh, and mark the memo line accordingly. Uh, happy Father's Day to all who celebrate. Hope you have a great day. Uh, and then we have some birthdays and anniversaries. Um, two of the birthdays are actually in the room today. So uh, Jamila and Mackenzie, if you do want to come forward for the birthday prayer, you are certainly welcome to do that. In addition to these two attendees, we also have this week, uh, today is Mike Burns' birthday, and we also have um, Jane Lawrence, uh, her birthday is later in the week. But today, special occasion, birthday in person. On the back of your bulletin, you'll see the birthday prayer. So let's pray together for Mackenzie, Jamila, Mike Burns, and Jane Lawrence. Let's pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, Mackenzie. Happy birthday, Jim. We begin our service with our opening hymn, number 410, hymn 410.
Our service begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the Gloria. <laughs> Five smooth stones from the wadi, 
put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and David and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army to this, this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, and David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine, David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is portions of Psalm 9, which we will read responsibly by a whole verse. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gate of death. The ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug, and in the snare they set is their own foot caught. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are trapped in the words of their The wicked shall be given over to the grave, and also all the peoples that forget God. For the needy Rise up, O Lord, let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. Patience, 
kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians, our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak to you as children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing together hymn number 379. Hymn 379.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace. Be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> so if you drive west on Route 30, somewhere over near Dalton, I mean Dalton, there's a business that has a big sign out front which reads, Our doors are open. We believe in faith over fear. I've been thinking about that sign a lot, especially given today's readings. I will come back to that in a bit. First, let's look at David and Goliath. We all know the story of David and Goliath. We reference it all the time. Anytime there's an underdog in a sporting event, anytime some citizen takes on City Hall, any time a fledgling democracy narrowly escapes the jaws of authoritarianism, David and Goliath is part of the fabric of the stories we tell each other. A handy metaphor that doesn't need to be explained. The seemingly weaker person wins out over the obviously stronger person. We love it as a metaphor because it is always rooted in absurd levels of hope, like Miracles can happen. Like the Browns or the Bills could actually win the Super Bowl. You don't expect it, and that's why it's great. It keeps hope alive. But the danger of any Bible story becoming a metaphor for our daily life is that it becomes divorced from its real context. We forget the story itself and the phrase David and Goliath becomes more of shorthand for smaller beats bigger. And that saddens me a little because there is such rich detail in this tale. Things that get lost when it's just a catchphrase. And really, looking at this story with fresh eyes can reveal important things that we might overlook. And one of those things I noticed this week is this. When David comes to Saul and says, your servant will go and fight this Philistine, Saul tries to talk him out of it using reason. You are just a boy. He has been a warrior since his youth. So David tries to reason back with him about how he already has all of this experience fighting wild animals. It's like the potential employer says, you have no experience at this job. And the prospective employee says, here's why my other skills would be a great fit for this situation. They're both looking at the past ways of doing things in order to figure out what to do in the future. Then Saul takes it one step further. He says, okay, you can have the job, but here's the way we've always done things. Put on this huge armor that will never fit you. Like saying, if you're going to do a thing that no one's ever done before, here's how we have failed at it in the past. Let's try to make you into something that you're not. Using the way we've done things before to face a situation we've never seen before. And that's the thing that really jumps out to me reading this story 
this year, you and I, along with everybody else on the planet, are trying to navigate how we move into the future. We've never been collectively isolated from one another for a year like this. We've never had to close the building for months on end like this. We've never come out the other side of a national trauma quite like this one. And it's tempting, or dare I say natural, to want to just return to what we've done in the past. To put on Saul's armor, put a bronze helmet on our head, clothe ourselves with a coat of mail, and try in vain to walk. The challenges we're facing right now have never been faced by this congregation. The future we are walking into together is big and new and intimidating. We are like David facing Goliath. And putting on Saul's armor from former times is not going to help. Because that armor was not made for us in this moment. What worked in the past might work in this very different present, but it also very much might not work for us right now. What definitely will work for us in this moment are the gifts and abilities God has already given to us as the community that is St. Timothy's Church in Massa. Our own five smooth stones, our own sling in our collective hand, and most importantly, our God on our side. I am confident we will find our way into the future together because God is walking with us, just as God was walking with that little shepherd boy named David. Now, let's return to that sign out on Route 30 in Dalton. We're open. We believe in faith over fear. I get the sentiment. It's a way of saying that God is more powerful than this virus. And sure, God is more powerful than this virus. But the implication in that sign and in that attitude is that it is the strength of our faith rather than the power of God that makes us unafraid. I've seen the signs in front of plenty of churches around Stark County. If we really trust in God, we wouldn't be afraid. Let me say in the plainest terms, that is not true. And we can go to today's gospel lesson to see why that is not true. As you'll recall, Jesus and the disciples are out in the boat. Jesus is sleeping. A storm comes up. Jesus is sleeping. The disciples start to panic. Jesus is sleeping. You get the theme by now. And they wake Jesus up and they ask, Do you not care that we are perishing? Do you not care that we are perishing? Then Jesus says to the wind and the sea, Peace be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. A dead calm. And then comes the moment that we have to get right here, because it definitely colors how we hear the words from Jesus. Jesus says to the disciples, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Why are you afraid? Not why were you afraid? It is not that they were afraid of the storm. It is that they were afraid that Jesus could not save them in the storm. Their lack of faith comes down to this. They were afraid that they had put their trust in the wrong guy. They were afraid that Jesus isn't who he said he was. They were afraid they had backed the wrong horse. The question from Jesus isn't, why were you afraid of the storm? The question is, why did you doubt that I could save you? 
And this is important. It is in fact crucial when we think of approaching our own death as each of us will one day. To have faith doesn't mean that you are not afraid of death. Of course we are afraid of death. But to have faith means that you trust that Jesus will save you in death. Not save you from death, save you in death. We get the whole thing wrong when we expect Jesus to save us from the perils and dangers of this life. Suffering comes to us all, even with Jesus in our boat. Our faith, which is a gift from God, enables us to trust that Jesus will, in fact, save us. Whatever, whenever trouble strikes, like the disciples, we find ourselves asking, God, do you not care that we are perishing? And the answer is yes. God cares very much that we are perishing. And that is why Jesus is in the boat with us. It is not a lack of faith that makes us afraid of the dangers of life. That sign that says faith over fear is a false dichotomy. We should be afraid of dangerous things. Being afraid of death and viruses and falling off cliffs is what keeps us alive. Fear of dangerous things is a good thing. But what faith does, what trust does, what Jesus does, is remind us that we are not alone and that God will bring us through our uncertain future by showing us new ways to be the church, to trust that Jesus is who he says he is, and that he will one day raise us up from our silent graves along with all those who have gone before. Jesus said, peace, be still, and there was dead calm. And in that dead calm, we know that we are safe, just as we have been safe all along. God is with us. Jesus is in the boat with us. And we will see the other side. Amen. Turning to page 358, page 358, we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form one. 
which could be found on page 383. Page 383, Form 1. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop, for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and the firm, for the widow and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, especially Chris Lane, Priya Curran, Chuck Tilly, Michael Flan, Judy Wigginton, David Wigginton, Jeff Frank, Bobby Malbach, John Malbach, Isaac Leggett, Brian Dorish, Mike Redwell, Tony Contini, Beth Conley, Bob Dane, Jim Koenig, Chuck Coleman, Patty Ann, Paul Cabot, Tim and Sharon Berger, Steve Dubel, Noble Carpenter, Kathy Tilly, Martha, Betsy Kinsenko, Anne Spencer, Roger Walters, Rob, Cal Walcott, Colleen Shan Shanahan Major, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for the prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Thomas Crago and David Dickerhu, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of St. Timothy, of St. Cecilia, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another, and all our life, to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. for yet another announcement. <laughs> uh, we will be distributing communion and bread only. Um, I will come to the center aisle and you can come up the side or up the middle, um, receive the bread and then return to your seat however you can um, without running into too many people. Um, it's a little chaotic right now but that's just the way it is right now. Um, so again, be careful, watch your step getting in and out of the pews. Uh, if you would prefer not to partake in uh, the sacrament, there is a prayer for spiritual communion in your bulletin, which I encourage you to go ahead and pray. Uh, we'll be using Eucharistic Prayer B today, which begins on page 367. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God. We stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and light, you made us in your image, and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name.
thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Timothy, Blessed Cecilia, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Turning to page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We sing together our closing hymn, number 535. Hymn 535. <laughs> Something I forgot, which was there are three three couples having anniversaries this week, none of whom are in the room, but two of whom may be watching online. And so, for David and Judy Wigginton, for David and Jill Strothbeck, and.
and for John and Lynette King, the anniversary blessing. O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary to you three couples. Now, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.